Yo, yo, today we're talking about Don Phenomenon, the blood sugar rise in the morning that just seems to be frustrating for 99% of us. <laughs> I cannot wait to get into this topic and start uh, smoothing out those blood sugars. Certainly took me a number of years to get it figured out, and I don't want it to take you that long. Now, if you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay real quick in the comments. I want to see who we got uh, watching this at a later point and excited to have you here. We're going to be jumping in, and before we do, I'm going to make sure that we do have a live feed, and uh, we'll hop into our, our live training this week. If you're new here, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I also have type 1 diabetes. I've been living with it for almost 13 years at this point, and we're going to talk about the science behind Don Phenomenon, but also how to deal with it, because in my opinion, that's more important. You, you just don't want to have to deal with that anymore. So we're going to chat about that today, but let's go ahead and confirm our live feed. If you can hear me, drop a number one in the comments. I would love to know if we've got audio today. Make sure that it is plugged in. All right. Looks like we do have visuals, so we're good to go there. Very exciting. All right. I felt like an announcer just now, like uh, at a sports event. <laughs> just rolling through it. We'll slow down for the live itself. We got a number one in the comments. Thank you. Thank you. We are good. Coming from Laura Dunn. Love it. All right. So uh, because we do have audio and visual, we'll go ahead and hop in. I'm going to get some water. And uh, actually, tip number one, if you're dealing with Tom Phenomenon, stay hydrated. Water is so helpful in so many different body functions. All right. So today... I'm talking about the the sneaking evil high blood sugars in the morning where you think you start off your day smoothly and then you know 30 minutes later 60 minutes later it's, it's a different story completely different story uh in fact i would love to know in the comments go ahead and type the letters dp if you've ever experienced don phenomenon or that blood sugar rise uh, there's a couple of different reasons it can rise we'll get into that in a little bit as well uh, and ultimately end up with what some strategies look like to avoid that. And now, if I could, in fact, I will. Can I? I can. Sweet. There's my DP for Dawn Phenomenon. I sure hope that doesn't mean anything inappropriate or weird. <laughs> but DP, as we got another DP in the comments as well, coming from Gloria. So Dawn Phenomenon is one of three reasons that we see blood sugars rise overnight and in the mornings. Now, some of them are more common than others. One is the Samoji effect. This is when a low blood sugar leads into a spike in blood sugar. It's the body's response. Uh, in most cases, it's a severe low in the middle of the night, and the body responds by assisting. This does not always happen. Do not rely on your body to get you out of a low blood sugar because you might be one of the people that it doesn't help with. Uh, I've certainly encountered some lows before. I've never experienced Samoji's effect, but that's one reason why blood sugars could rise. Now, the second reason, Don Phenomenon, that's the main topic of today. Uh, Don Phenomenon usually happens in the early morning hours. Oftentimes, before we wake up is when it begins. Uh, for a lot of people, it's between the hours of 3 to 5 a.m. It can be 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Depends on what your circadian rhythm looks like. But within Don Phenomenon, you see this rise happening. And uh, it can feel like some stubborn blood sugars sneaking up on you, almost like it's impossible to catch up with. Uh, we got another DP coming from Catherine. Love it. Well, you probably don't love it. <laughs> Don Phenomenon is not fun, but love that we've got some people here who are going to be finding this helpful. Uh, now, the third option, third thing that can happen, it's called feet on the floor. And this is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> when your feet hit the floor, your body responds and typically you see a blood glucose rise upon waking. Now, if you wake up early, sometimes you can match Dawn Phenomenon with feet on the floor. Sometimes Dawn Phenomenon looks like feet on the floor because you wake up early. It's a number of different things we'd have to dive into on an individualized basis, right? This is what a lot of my coaching clients come to me for initially is Dawn Phenomenon or starting their day off with higher blood sugars. That's one of the first things we look at. Why is because if you can get your morning blood sugars figured out, you start your day off on the right foot. <laughs> if you can start your day off on the right foot, you're less likely to experience the blood sugar roller coaster. You're also more likely to start your day off in a pleasant mood. You know, interactions with other people seem to be a bit more joyous <laughs> and not as much uh, moodiness as you're, you know, angry at blood sugars, but it kind of comes across in those conversations early morning. At least that's what I've experienced. Now, if we can get our, our fasting blood sugars stabilized, good chance that overnight looked good as well. 
That's a third of your day. That's one of our hacks for lowering your A1C. If you can get your blood sugars perfect while you're sleeping, which should ideally be six to eight hours, which is about one third of your day, that means a third of your day is in range and you're guaranteed a minimum of 33% time in range. Interesting, right? We can reverse engineer these things with math. Math is everywhere. And if you know your diabetes math, everything simplifies. In fact, this is one of the main things that I am going to take to the grave. This is what I will stand and fight on top of a hill for. If you understand diabetes math, you can figure out diabetes. If you don't know diabetes math, it's going to feel mysterious. You're going to be frustrated beyond all belief because the numbers won't make sense. And uh, we quite literally deal with numbers every day. <laughs> and if you don't know what your diabetes math looks like yet or your blood sugar formula, uh, you can start to see it in the surface level ratios that we use, right? Our insulin to carb ratio. Ratio is a mathematical piece. So all that to say, dawn phenomenon. What is it? Why is it? How is it? <laughs> How do we deal with this thing, right? Uh, now, if you're just joining us now, we got a couple of DPs in the comments. That, I don't know what else it would stand for, but that's standing for Don Phenomenon. So if you experience Don Phenomenon, I so see we got a bunch of people jumping in now. Drop DP in the comments if you experience Don Phenomenon or the morning blood sugar rise. Now, for myself and quite a few of my clients, I'll say, uh, we experience Don Phenomenon and feet on the floor. It's a fun combination, right? When you have the, the early morning rise and then as soon as you get your day started rise and they can kind of come together and make your morning a rough start. Now, there's different strategies that are going to be helpful for different diabetes management strategies or therapy choices. Uh, we talk about insulin pump versus MDI. So I want to know how to cater this live to whoever is here live with me. Um, you go ahead and drop the word pump if you're on an insulin pump or MDI if you're taking shots. So you got Bill says DP as well. So let me know if you guys are pump or MDI. MDI stands for multiple daily injections. I want to see who we've got here. We can kind of tailor the uh, the strategies based on that. We got pump. We got another pump and another pump. Pump, 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 pump it up. We got Kathy, Laura, Bill, all say pump. All right, we'll stick with pump for now. Um, and just so you guys know, there are different strategies for MDI. If we got some MDIers in here, we can certainly adjust and uh, our pivot, talk about that. But for insulin pumps, we're looking at the settings. So if you do not have your settings set properly, oh, we got an MDI, I see you. Gloria and Catherine, both MDI. All right, we'll cover both. So with the pump, you can set different settings every hour of the day. Uh, and actually, before we continue with this, it is getting hot in this room. Uh, let me know if this fan is gonna bug out the microphone. Give me, uh, Give me the number one if the audio is still okay, if I have this low-powered fan going. Can you guys hear that? Or are we cool? Drop a one if the audio is good, two if the audio sucks, and if it sounds like a wind stream. Real quick, let me know. One. All right, cool. This thing should protect from the, the wind. Anyways, another one. Perfect. So with the pump settings, you can set them quite often. You know, I've seen some people change their pump settings every single hour. That is not useful, all right? The more pump settings you have, the more complicated it gets. And if they're overlapping, you're never gonna know what your true basal rates look like. Now, the reason for that is that on an insulin pump, your basal rates are essentially you getting fast acting insulin in small micro doses throughout the day, throughout the night, right? Now, if you have those amounts change every hour, you're not gonna know which of the settings to change if you're experiencing some frustrations in blood sugars. Reason for that is that basal insulin can often take one to three hours to impact blood sugars. In other words, if you were to take your pump, turn it off, and remove it entirely, which means no insulin going into you, would you see a blood sugar spike five minutes from now? No. 15 minutes from now? No. 30 minutes from now? I mean, maybe, but likely it's not going to start significantly impacting your blood sugars for up to an hour or more. So as a result, uh, most recommendations point to no more than six to eight different settings in your pump per 24 hour period. Now, when we look at Dawn Phenomenon, in a lot of cases, Dawn Phenomenon requires its own setting because we're going to need some more insulin to take care of the Dawn Phenomenon. Now, the issue there is, is it going to be the same time every day? which means you could program it into your pump, or is it going to change depending on your schedule, depending on what you eat, depending on how 
the the weather outside is that day, <laughs> you know, all the things that impact blood sugars. So as we're looking at, do we give settings? Do we adjust our settings to match with Dawn Phenomenon? It's a lot of questions you got to ask yourself because what happens if you set a higher insulin basal rate to take care of Dawn Phenomenon and then the next day it doesn't happen? Well, then you're going to go low while you're sleeping. That's not good either, right? So you got to ask yourself these questions before you make permanent changes. Obviously, talk to your doctor, your endo, your educator, or your coach, or whoever is the one working with you on this before you go in and, and make any radical changes. Uh, there's a word that I haven't used in a long time. Radical. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope this is making sense so far. Uh, and real quick, give me an idea if if we're diving too deep. I can geek out on this stuff, you guys. Like We can talk about the science behind why it happens. But I need to know if this is too much, if we should back off a bit and just talk surface level strategies like, hey, you should drink more water, this type of exercise, or if this is helpful to dive into the details. Uh, so give me the word geek if you want me to geek out and uh, give me surface if you want me just to stay surface level. We can talk about the like the big picture either way. Totally fine. Real quick. Just give me that. Bill says geek on. Got one response there. If we don't get any other responses, we'll just go off of what Bill says. Commenters get priority. If you guys are in the chat, then I'm going to pay attention to y'all first. Looks like it's just going to be Bill for now. Bill's going to get the superstar. All right, we're going to leave it. So geeking on uh, with Dom Phenomenon, just so you guys have some background. Oh, we got Chris. There we go. Okay, now you guys are plumping in. I look like there must be a delay. Catherine says G. Uh, Chris says geek. Kathy says weak. I think you meant geek. <laughs> Love it. So with Don Phenomenon, quick background on the science behind it. Don Phenomenon slash feet on the floor. There's some differences between them, but essentially it's your body saying, hey, here's some energy to help you get your day started. And this happens in diabetics and non-diabetics alike, which is the crazy part, you know, we think that our body is broken because we wake up and immediately see a spike in blood sugars now that we wear CGMs, a lot of us. Uh, the reality is it's the liver dumping glucose and saying, hey, I stored this for you. I see that you're starting your day. I think you need some energy, right? And so it's releasing that stored fuel. We're getting fuel to start our day because getting up, walking around, going to work, doing whatever it is that you're doing in the mornings, you need energy for that, right? So it gives us the ability to burn energy with that stored glucose. So the liver is saying, hey, here you go. Now, second side note, we talked about basal with the pump a little bit. Uh, your basal rates are set to balance your liver's output of glucose over a 24 hour period of time. So ultimately the reason we take basal insulin or a long acting insulin, oh boy, this is starting to sound like a masterclass. <laughs> I hope you guys are okay with this. Uh, but the reason we take it, is because the liver is slowly dripping out glucose throughout the day, giving us some of that stored energy to burn off as fuel. Now, most of us have similar burn rates and similar fuel storage per day, which is why we can see similar basal rates. However, there are sometimes reasons where you're going to need to shift your basal rates day to day, week to week, month to month, depending on a lot of different factors. So it's important to understand that your basal rates are not a set it and forget it kind of thing. All right, they need to adapt to your lifestyle, to your choices, to your habits. This is also impacted by your sleep patterns, your hydration levels, your exercise, your food choices, all of these things. Uh, if you're sick, right, lots of things can impact your basal needs, your bolus needs, your correction factor, your insulin sensitivity. Unfortunately, there is no set it and forget it medication with diabetes. There's no uh, take this pill and you're good, right? Things change. Our needs change our desires change. So as a result, you got to be able to pivot and adapt to that. That's why you need a formula and not just a set ratio. Formulas allow you to adapt with these things. Now, as you're looking at your dawn phenomenon potential or feet on the floor or whatever rise in the morning that you're seeing, you got to be ready to combat that, right? So looking at MDI versus pump, both of them are going to fall into the same category of, well, I know it's happening. What can I do now? So if you're in a reactive state, you got to know what actions you can take. And I've told a few of my clients uh, different strategies depending on their needs, their wants, their desires. But ultimately, we got to figure out how to stop that rise or how to match up with that rise. So we look at the rise that's happening because of those morning 
sugars, you know, there's a certain level of insulin resistance for most of us in the mornings as well that kind of wears off as the day goes on. What can I do to improve insulin sensitivity? What can I do to lower blood sugars? And what can I match that up with so that I don't have to worry about throwing insulin at these blood sugars in the morning? So this is where different strategies come into play. It's not just insulin plus blood sugars, right? There's a lot of different varieties of strategies that we can use. So if you're somebody who wants to go for runs, morning might be a good time for you, right? Uh, if you're somebody who is going to eat breakfast, maybe you calculate however much extra you're going to need for that morning rise. And there is a way to calculate. You can calculate everything with diabetes. I can tell you that if I were to eat, let's see what kind of food I have here. Man, I thought I had some snacks. Well, I guess I don't. Ah, here we go. If I were to eat honeycomb, <laughs> that's a really random one, right? But if I were to eat honeycomb, it's got 20 grams of carbs per serving. I can tell you exactly how much this is going to rise my blood sugars. If my starting blood sugar is 120, I can pinpoint where it's going to end up if I were to eat this and not dose for it. That's math. Diabetes math. Thank you. So with this, if you can understand what your diabetes math looks like, you can start to plan ahead for the Dawn phenomenon, how much to dose for it. Uh, how to adjust your dosing strategies, but understanding why it's there in the first place might help you to attack that and create a plan, a plan of attack, right? So understanding if it is dawn phenomenon, is it happening at three, four or five o'clock in the morning? Is it feet on the floor? Does it happen as soon as you wake up? First step is just isolating what's going on, right? And once you can isolate that, the next step is to analyze, right? So if we're analyzing the blood sugars, uh, if you're wearing a CGM, best thing you can do is identify what time it starts to happen. And why is that helpful? If you're on an insulin pump, if it's consistent, you can start to make adjustments to assist with the rise, right? If your MDI strategy looks a little bit different, you might want to adjust the timing of your basal or long acting shot. If there is a natural peak and valley with that shot, uh, different types of long lasting insulin are going to have different action potential, different timelines. Uh, some of them are more evenly distributed. See, I'm a little bit fuzzy right now. There we go. Uh, some of the long acting insulins are more evenly distributed over 24 hour periods of time. The other ones have a peak and valley where they're more effective and less effective in different times of the day. So you can play with how you give it, when you give it, how much is given, a lot of different, different levers that you can pull. So if you know which of the levers to pull, you go, okay, I'm gonna pull this lever, Ah, blood sugars got worse. I'm going to pull this lever. Ah, that fixed it, right? And you can start to kind of tweak and play with your blood sugar strategies. I hope this is making sense so far. So with Dawn Phenomenon, I'm going to back up for a second and give that high level. One of the best things you can do is hydrate. Now, if you're waking up in the morning, seeing a bit more feet on the floor, first thing you got to do, chug water. Now, well, let's back up. First thing you should do is brush your teeth because <laughs> you probably got some morning breath. But brush your teeth and then chug water. Now, if you want a, a bit of a metabolic boost, you could throw some lemon juice in there. A uh, number of other concoctions you can make for morning drinks to assist with boosting your metabolism. But first thing you got to understand is that water is going to help. Okay, Any insulin that's circulating uh, it really just help your body function. Think about it like this. You just went at least eight hours with no water. Most of us don't drink water before bed either. So it could be nine, 10, 11 hours since you've had water. Your body needs water. It's gonna help with everything. So drink water. It's one of the first things I want you to do. Second thing is identify if we've got different dietary habits that are affecting our dawn phenomenon. If we think about it as the liver dumping glucose, well, what is the liver storing? The liver is storing extra glucose from our consumption, right? So when we eat food, Boy, we're I'm really geeking out on you guys. I'm just in a teaching mode right now. Coach Matt's coming in. So what is the liver storing? It's storing glucose. When we consume food, it's going to go to one of three places right off the bat. First place, if applicable, if they've been used recently, is your muscle tissue, right? So the glucose goes to restore muscle, mus, restore muscle, uh, the muscle glycogen. If it has been used, let's say you worked out that day. Glucose is going to go in there and assist in recovery and replenish the missing glucose. Second place it's going to go is your liver. So if you've depleted uh, liver, if you, again, went for a long walk, or maybe you've just been burning energy throughout the day, 
We're going to refuel uh, the liver stores, liver glycogen. All right. Now, third place is going to go if there's extra, if there's excess calories. I want to see if you guys know. Drop in the chat. What are your guesses? What's the third place that fuel or glucose is going to be stored? Uh, Bill says, very useful strategies, well thought out and explained, Matt. I got you, Bill. Glad you're enjoying it. So where do we think the third place that glucose is stored? We got number one is muscle tissue. Two is the liver. Third is going to be, don't worry, we won't judge you if you get it wrong. It's kind of the point. If you are participating, you will actually learn more. That's why I encourage you guys to leave comments in here because as you comment, your brain stays engaged. Boom. Um, oh, shoot. Well, we got a winner first right off the bat. <laughs> Carol says fat cells. That's correct. Adipose tissue, your fat. Uh, your fat is going to fill up if we have too many calories. Now, the muscle tissue, if it has not been used, is going to get bypassed, which means if you're not working out, it goes straight to the liver. As soon as the liver is full, the rest of it goes to fat. This is why a large part of the weight loss conversation is how much do you burn versus how much do you consume? right? Calories in versus calories out, because it can oftentimes be simplified to that equation. However, there are some nuances here and there, right? Uh, we got Kathy says fat. Catherine says fat. Sonia says fat. You guys are geniuses. I love it. So uh, to wrap this, this side of the discussion up, if there are dietary changes that are impacting how much is being stored in the liver, uh, we can talk about um, well, there's force feeding, but that's more muscle tissue conversation. If we talk about, uh, what was it called? Carb loading <laughs> in college. Uh, so I was a collegiate athlete back in the day. And before big race days, we used to always carb load. Uh, I'm holding up my pump piece. Carb load, right? And there is some truth to this, but there's also some back and forth on who's correct. But the idea is that you fill your liver and your adipose tissue and everything up with carbs, lots of extra stored energy so that the next day you have more energy. And I've actually noticed this in my, uh, my CGM reports, that if I am eating heavy, heavy amounts of carbs and calories the night before, I do actually see a more pronounced effect on my blood sugars the following morning. So there's a lot of different things that can impact the severity of the dawn phenomenon, but I want you to understand. <laughs> Catherine says, not genius, just fat. All right, I'll give it to you, but I think you're geniuses too. Uh, but what we want to look at is what are some causation versus correlation? And this is one of the biggest conversations I want you to have with yourself in your head every time you think about blood sugars. Is it caused by this or was there a correlation because of this? So when we look at dawn phenomenon or feet on the floor, we think, oh my gosh, my blood sugar skyrocketed in the mornings. It's got to be one of those two. But then we dig past all of the other pieces and you're like, well, I didn't even have breakfast. So it's not the food. It's got to be the dawn phenomenon. All I had was coffee. Interesting, right? Most of us see that coffee does not impact blood sugar significantly, but there are quite a few still that will see that even just black coffee, coffee by itself causes a rise in blood sugars and requires the use of insulin. Now, this is for a number of different reasons. We're going off on a little bit of a tangent here. I hope this is okay with you guys, but coffee can lead to a blood sugar response as well. It actually leads to insulin resistance and a cortisol release. Whew, we're going into a lot of different rabbit holes today. Um, so with that, understanding that just because you see a rise in the morning, it does not mean that it is dawn phenomenon or feet on the floor or anything else. There, unless you've studied these topics exclusively and in depth, you can't assign attribution until you understand which of the pieces of the puzzle could be at the root cause of these blood sugar rises and drops or even stabilization. I've heard for years people say, oh, eat protein because it stabilizes your blood sugars. BS. Protein does not stabilize blood sugars. It causes a delayed response rise in blood sugars, but because most people are using it during activities, which would usually drop blood sugars, it looks like protein is keeping you stable through the activities. Reality is, if you ate protein and sat on the couch, you would likely see a blood sugar rise. That or your basils are too strong. Whew, dropping gold nuggets. I don't even know if you guys realize how important these pieces are. <laughs> but this is stuff that we teach in our coaching programs. Like this is how you break apart the patterns in your CGMs and they understand and uh, assign attribution to what is causing the ups and downs. If you can do that, 
if you can assign attribution to why are they going up, why are they going down, and why are my blood sugars stable, you will fix just about everything. If you can understand exactly why things are happening, you're then able to go in and either adjust or pivot with these new strategies and say, okay, so now I know why the blood sugars are going up. Now I can either remove that or pair it up with something that's going to cause blood sugars to go down, like insulin, a walk, hydration, right? Lots of different things here. So um, before I just go off on another completely different tangent <laughs> and start passionately explaining these things and truly geeking out with you guys, is this helpful so far? Um, give me a give me like a zero to 10. I want to know where we're at with this, because if this is not helpful, it's okay. My feelings will not be hurt. Just know it helps me to know that I should pivot and, you know, we can talk about a different topic, but give me a zero to 10 on, is this helpful? And we'll, uh, we'll use that to reevaluate the conversations. We got a 10 coming from Bill. Ten from Kathy. Yes, yes is not a number, but I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. All right, cool. So this is helpful. I want to make sure that I'm not just going off on rants and uh, making you guys listen to me. So uh, we got more tens coming in. Kathy and Sonia and uh, Hannah, Carol, love it. Okay. So with these different topics, we we started with one. We we covered quite a few, but. The idea is to understand where the blood sugars are starting, what's making them go up or down or all around, and can we assign attribution so that we can then make adjustments, right? So if it is truly Dawn phenomenon, first thing I want you to look at with insulin pumps is where is it happening? Is it three o'clock in the morning? Is it four o'clock? Is it 4.45 every single day? And is it consistent? If it is consistent, you can start looking at or asking yourself if this would be helpful to start making adjustments, right? And go, okay, hmm, if I adjusted my basal at this time, would it fix this problem, right? And you can go ask your medical professionals, your experts, your coaches, whoever it is you're working with, would this action be helpful if I took it? Now, MDI, a little bit trickier. We talked about the action timing of the insulins that are being used for basal. You can adjust the time that it's given, the amount that's given. You can split doses. In case no one's ever told you that before, um, you don't have to take all of your basal all at once, but there are different methods at switching it up and, you know, taking a morning dose and a nighttime dose versus just a morning or just a nighttime dose. Uh, some friends of mine have used fast acting insulin in addition to uh, their long acting in order to take care of that feed on the floor or the dawn phenomenon. I've had some friends who were so dedicated that even though they would wake up at seven, they would set an alarm for five wake up, take whatever insulin they needed to cover the dawn phenomenon and go back to sleep. So every single day they wake up at five, take insulin, go back to sleep, wake up at seven, start their day. And that for, for them, because we're all different, but that for them was able to keep them stable. So I will say this, MDI and dawn phenomenon is a more complicated process uh, to get it to be stable routinely. Um, well, let me back up. It's not more complicated. Truth be told, it's more simple, which is the beauty of MDI, but it's more difficult to match with your daily life. It's it's going to be a bit more of a, an effort, but does not mean it's impossible. Uh, this was something that I used to be able to control with MDI. Now, of course, I'm on a pump, so it's not an issue anymore. Uh, that being said, I may or may not be going back to MDI to test some things out. You guys know me. I'm the uh, the blood sugar experimenter. I love trial and error. That's how we learn, how we figure out new things, and ultimately how we came up with the 80-20 blood sugar formula, which is what I teach my clients. And uh, a lot of fun there, a lot of new concepts that uh, actually a lot of medical professionals are going through our program trying to learn new things. We'll just leave it there uh, and bring it into their practices because it's, it's pretty revolutionary. So uh, I see we got some other people in the chat. Some people trying to message me. Hold on. Uh, Chris says 8, 9, 10. Catherine says 10. Love it. So with these types of topics, obviously today was just me kind of geeking out with you guys. And I love doing that. This is largely why uh, I, I jump in these lives to share things that we learn. With Dawn Phenomenon or Feet on the Floor, if you're seeing blood sugars rise, do not just accept that as the norm. That's what my first endo told me to do. She said, you know what? That's just kind of part of the deal. And uh, just take insulin, you know, and, and you'll be okay. 
the issue is that I was waking up at like 170, 190, 200. And then she was like, oh, yeah, just take insulin for it. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if we're spending hours outside of our range, we're wreaking havoc on our bodies in the long term. You know, back in the day, it was uh, do what you can because you're not going to be around forever. Well, now we know all these new strategies so we can live long, healthy, happy and fulfilling lives. So why would I not take care of myself if I expect to live a full life? Right. So I want you to start asking these questions. How can I take better care of myself? How can I uh, mitigate these risks? How can I reduce the spikes that I'm seeing? How can I reduce the frequency of lows? How can I live my best life? How can I be more flexible, spontaneous and enjoying good food? Uh, my wife and I just got an in invite to go out to dinner with family tonight. I said, yes. Uh, actually, I said, heck yes, because <laughs> it's going to be really good food. But that's something that I used to not have 100% confidence with, right? You're going to have to put some work in to learn the strategies, but eventually, I promise you, it will pay off. You'll be able to have more flexibility, going to go have some amazing food. Who knows? Maybe we'll get sushi or pizza and just go crazy. Uh, and I can tell you, I am... 95% certain that I will stay in range. <laughs> and if anybody doesn't get that joke, it's because my uh, my two-year average is 95% time in range on a daily basis. So there's the, the inside joke. Uh, Bill says, outstanding, Matt. Many thanks. You got it, Bill. Love seeing you guys in the comments. And I uh, tell you what, we've got a lot of new team members that we've been bringing on the last couple of weeks, and we are expanding what we're doing. Uh, we've been told actually by quite a few medical professionals that we are doing the world a disservice if we do not expand our services and help more people. So that is our mission. What I want to do for you today is if you're curious, if you want more info on how we can help you out, whether it's learning more about Don Phenomenon, MDI, Pump, Activity, Food, the list goes on. If you want to know more about what we do and how we keep blood sugar so stable, I want you to type the word coach in the comments and we'll get you some more info. All right. Outside of that, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Love hanging out with you in these uh, these weekly trainings that we do. Let me know if I have or if you have any questions, how I can help. And again, type the word coach if you want more info on that. See you guys next week. Every week, Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you are here because Facebook doesn't always notify. And uh, love, love, love seeing the questions and engagement that you guys have. So you got Sonia in the comments with coach. Love it. I'll reach out to you and uh, everybody else. Thanks for hanging out. Have a great rest of your day and keep up the fight. See you guys.